He's a true hacker, he's a protagonist And it's no crash, he's ready to fight We need you hero We're holding out for you hero To save the metaverse You gotta be sure and it's gotta be soon And you gotta be larger than life Hi, I'm Michael Roberts and this and This is fit to be read Snow Crash is cool Snow Crash is a unique, adventurous, and action-packed cyberpunk novel by a cyberpunk master, Neil Stevenson. Snow Crash is very cool and it is fit to be read. Stick around as the full review will feature several original, never-before-seen artwork for the novel. Neil Stevenson's novel Snow Crash was published in 1992. In addition to being very cool, the book presents philosophy, religion, the metaverse, and advanced virtual technologies, linguistics, anthropology, politics, corporatism, and lots of geography. That the novel incorporates all of these and does not veer away from the cool easily landed this book high on my recent top 150 science fiction reads list. If you haven't checked out that video already, please go and do so after you watch this one. As with each review on this channel, the episodes will begin with a spoiler-free review, character analysis, and plot and atmosphere summary. Following that summary, I will announce a five likes and five dislikes segment that will include spoilers. If you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button and the notification bell before we start. Snow Crash is set mostly in and around near future Los Angeles, while the setting presented is very different from our world, it is still recognizable despite its extreme changes. The setting feels more like a modern alternate universe, more than it does feel like a near or far future timeline. That isn't to say that the novel lacks prescience. Stevenson's take on digital libraries, the metaverse and VR goggles, and a near-perfect prediction of Google Earth and GPS technology is already the stuff of legend. Much of the fun in this novel lives in these extremes. In this world, centralized government has pretty much gone by the wayside, mostly because the nations of the world have become too weak, inept, or bankrupt. It's a fire sale, and governing has pretty much become privatized. Even the United States has collapsed. Pseudo-nation corporations have filled the void, and they've bought up specific areas and have franchilettes, that's a mashup of franchises and consulates, all over the world. For a small fee, a background check, and if you're the right color, there's New South Africa, the Reverend Wayne's Pearly Gates, Narco Colombia, Nova Sicilia, of course owned by the Mafia, who also have, of course, cornered the market on pizza delivery. If you're fortunate, there's Mr. Lee's Greater Hong Kong, among others. Even the CIA has been privatized. All of these can exist within a few blocks of each other. Membership has its privileges. If you happen to be fleeing someone who's chasing you and you can duck into a franchulette where you have purchased citizenship, congratulations, you have found safe haven. Mr. Lee's Greater Hong Kong is a good one because that joint enlists some high-tech security rat things. For rat things, you gotta think attack dog cyborgs running off of a nuclear core. Believe it or not, the rat things can come across as quite lovable. Mr. Lee runs a tight ship, and so does Uncle Enzo. Now we jump happily into the deep end. Uncle Enzo, the head of the mafia and owner of Cosa Nostra Pizza, Incorporated, is the premier pizza magnate. Without a central government and federal control, a vacuum exists where organized crime thrives. Uncle Enzo, the capo and the head of the mafia and head honcho for Cosa Nostra Pizza, Rules a pizza monopoly, wields incredible power, and is likewise respected and feared. Now, Enzo takes this seriously. He guarantees that you're going to have your pizza in 30 minutes or less. Failing at this would be hugely embarrassing and a stain on his character. Pizza delivery man is a serious profession, one that comes with, dare I say it, great power and great responsibility. The power is basically on loan from the Mafia. The responsibility comes in when you know your butt, 
Your life is on the line if you're late on a delivery. If the pizza is late, Enzo, to save face, is gonna be on the phone within five minutes with the customer to apologize profusely, give them a free trip to Italy, and much more. Uncle Easy is the head of the freaking mafia. This rich dude does not want to get his butt off the sofa during family time and go meet some schlub to apologize for a late delivery. Enter hero protagonist, the Deliverator. Oh, they try and crash him. At the black sun in the metaverse A scroll at arms no matter where they go nah. We're counting on hero protagonist But what if he shoots for my raven's weak Get away, yeah. Till the virus runs, demons take their turns. And someone there is dying. Keep us off the tip. Do you feel your name? Is your avatar not crying? Oh, they try and break me. Try and break me Excuse me a while I tend to my katana These skills belong to me And still seem real Now deservingly Rank number one but day five at be so stuck in this display yeah. Don't want your snow and I've got to go For he can talk of fear No, they won't get me So please excuse me while I got the lot up here Hero protagonist, hero, he's chosen this to be his name. Reading the book, this reads cool more than it does corny. Hero is at times pizza delivery man, contractor for the CIA, expert hacker, and one of the original creators of the virtual world metaverse and a master swordsman skilled with a katana. Snow Crash immediately pulls the reader into this familiar, unfamiliar world with an intense car chase of sorts. Hero, the deliverator, is on his way to a delivery, and of course, he can't be late. He can be inconvenienced, however, and that's exactly what happens when the story's other protagonist, yours truly, no, not me, and certainly not Whitey, but YT, or yours truly, Poon's Hero's Car. You see, YT is a courier, and couriers get around by pooning. Back to that in a moment. It's already clear that governmental and socioeconomic reality favors a system where the mafia can thrive. This capitalism to the extreme system also lends significance to the role of couriers, with spread out quasi nations covering the landscape and the remaining US basically a chaotic space with random enclaves or burb claves. The role of the courier is a crucial one in order to get anything delivered from point A to point B. Couriers are dynamic able to cross national borders, and willing to provide this service. These aren't your old school package shippers. Couriers are FedEx and UPS, mafia bagmen, notary, possible diplomats, etc. These folks will move a letter from Aunt Edna, classified documents, small arms, heavy arms, human arms, drugs, you name it. The main mode of transportation are the courier's planks. These planks are basically souped up future skateboards. Couriers latch onto vehicles on the highway using a magnetic harpoon with a cable attached. 
The targeted vehicle provides all the propulsion and momentum needed for the couriers to get around and make their deliveries. YT is a 15 year old girl with excellent reflexes and fighting skills. Her pooning of Hero's impressive mafia owned delivery car is the start of a very interesting and action packed partnership. YT is resourceful, sexually mature for her age, and demonstrates an uncanny ability to get in and out of sticky situations. Most interesting in the story is the atmosphere, satire, and the unique characters. Snow Crash is flashy, snarky, and satirical, but there is a plot in there too. The plot incorporates and blends religion, culture, linguistics, and archaeology. The title of the book refers to a drug called, of course, Snow Crash. Snow Crash is a drug and a computer virus. In the novel, we learn of its real-world connections to ancient Samaria and Babel, the goddess Asherah, a priest king named Enki, and the religious practice of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues happens to be one of the effects of the drug. In the metaverse, the virtual reality world that Stevenson introduces, Snow Crash is a virus that evades the heaviest of modern antivirus and crashes the victim's computer and their brain. Among those connected to this drug and virus are oil and communications tycoon, L. Bob Reif, a power seeker bent on some form of world domination. He enlists programmers, missionaries, and other minions, and his main enforcer, a mercenary named Raven. You never know how I watched you from the shadows as a child. You never know how it felt for the raven who's left behind. You'll get to know the days, the nights, the tears, the tears you'll cry. But now your time has come, and time, time is not on your side. Move through vines and hop fields Feel his harpoon in your chest All the pruners, they gather around him When they had him, they didn't let him out Raven, or Dmitry Ravenov, is an imposing force. He is gigantic, agile, and intimidating. He is armed with razor-sharp, armor-piercing glass knives, and at times glass-tipped spears, or frankly, any makeshift spear that he can come up with. If you're not impressed, perhaps I should have led with his possession of a nuclear warhead that he stole from a Russian nuclear sub that he carries around with him. The warhead, not the nuclear sub. Raven is dangerous and one might say that he has poor impulse control. His driving motive is a desire to nuke the US or apparently whatever is left of it. A few other characters worth mentioning before hitting the spoilery stuff are Day Fivid. He is a fellow hacker and a friend of Hero. While he had help from Hero and others, he's the main programmer responsible for the creation of the metaverse. He's also the owner of the Black Sun, the most exclusive and prominent place in the metaverse. Juanita is another programmer and yet another co-developer of the metaverse. She has history with both Hero and De Fivid. Fisheye is a mafia lieutenant who ends up in the mix. Enjoyable and Snow Crash are the unique, obscure, or inventive weapons and weapons tech. And Fisheye wields Reason. Reason? Reason is a hypervelocity personal railgun powered by a suitcase containing a nuclear core. Summarizing the remaining cast would spoil the fun, but here's a quick taste to whet your appetite. There's Ukrainian fuzz grunge rock musician Vitaly Chernobyl, Japanese rap artist Sushi K, we've got Squeaky, Roadkill, Mr. NG, or Mr. Ung, T-Bone, The Librarian, Mr. Lee of course, Lagos, Fido, Bruce Lee, and Greg Ritchie, who isn't very well known or familiar to anyone, though he does happen to be the President of the United States. 
Snow Crash is a one in a million classic, and I recommend it for anyone who enjoys the cyberpunk subgenre, commentary on commercialism, and likes the occasional dip into the absurd with a get over yourself, myself attitude and ability to just enjoy the ride. None of the characters are especially deep, but as a whole, they are interesting. It's also worth noting that there are a few spots in the middle of the book where the story does drag. Experience this book for the wild and exaggerated atmosphere, and experience the rest of this episode with spoilers as I share my five likes and five dislikes for Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash. Like number one, I love the fight scenes on the yacht with Hero and Fisheye and the Sniper. Very cool action and super original. The raft is an interesting setting, the strange interaction with Bruce Lee and company, Raven in his wetsuit, and of course Fisheye lighting things up with his ridiculous uranium gun. Dislike number one, sticking with Fisheye, this one's on me and it's super minor, but why did their Gatling gun reason Snow Crash? It's a double take moment. Sure, let's have it crash or malfunction, but why specifically did Stevenson have it snow crash? Does it really make sense? Did someone hack it? It seems reasonable for it to malfunction, but not related to the virus. Like number two, the memo on toilet paper suggesting that it should take 15 minutes and 62 seconds to read that memo, and then the chart measuring the boss's reaction to how long people are taking and categorizing employees by how much time it took them to read the memo, and it includes these gems. 15 minutes and 62 seconds. This means the person's a smart ass and needs attitude adjustment. 15 minutes and 63 seconds to 16 minutes, ass wipe, not to be trusted. Dislike number two, Hero being a freelancer for the CIA is pretty central to the story, but the logistics really seem to take a backseat to everything else that's going on. I think it could have really tightened things up if we had him check in with a handler during the big info dump sections much earlier in the novel. Dislike number three, I'm not going to be hard on this one because I don't think it was gratuitous and it worked for the character and certainly suited the plot. I think I could have done without YT's sex scene and I'll just leave it at that. Like number three, the first thing besides character names to just absolutely captivate me the first time that I read this book was that Stevenson could put me on the edge of my seat with anticipation over a pizza being delivered on time. The action is suspenseful, it's comprehensive, it includes subtle social commentary, and it's hilarious. Will the pizza be delivered, or will the last laugh go to the Pudgleys, Pink Hearts, and the Round Asses? Dislike number four. The possible origin of Snow Crash, the binary code digital metaverse, is the most far-fetched part of the story. Rife finding it in space through his radio astronomy network and suggesting that he listens for signals from other planets and that it was therefore reasonable and inevitable that he would discover a powerful metavirus. Eh. Dislike number five, big chunks in the middle of the book. Everything going on in both storylines gets very info dumpy. Hero's discussion with the librarian about Ashira and Deuteronomus is especially tedious. Like number four, the metaverse scene when the heavyweights NG or Ung, Hero, Mr. Lee, and Uncle Enzo are all together. Some of the slow points of the story actually get redeemed because it leads to this moment being even more satisfying. It also does some work of cleaning up the confusing parts of the earlier info dump. To be fair and complete though, this does revisit the Ashira language babble stuff that I didn't love. So this is a bit of a conditional like. Like number five, not conditional at all. How can you not love the outlandish ideas in this book? Companies using fake IDs to rent storage units and dumping drums of waste and leaving it for you store to dispose of? Marvelous. A riveting cyberpunk adventure, the novel is accessible and visionary, humorous and thought-provoking, devastating in its satirical attack on our obsession with convenience and commercialism. Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash is absolutely fit to be read. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Leverts. This is Fit to be Read. Please like, please subscribe. Please click the notification bell and YouTube will let you know every Thursday at 1 o'clock when I release new content. Thank you. Well,